Sorry guys, uh, had to do a part two. Video was really long, but I got a lot to say about Raw. So, you know, I know part twos don't get as many views as part one, but I hope you guys watch this one as well. Um, fucking timer is really annoying. I don't even know why on such advanced phones there's even a fucking timer. I should be allowed to record as much as I want. But anyway, we still got uh, some stuff to talk about here, actually. I've really had a lot to say. But anyway, when I last left you guys, please watch part one so you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, Paul Heyman calling out Roman Reigns. That just, it's subtle, but you really see just, it, it, it's really just like, it's insulting to a guy like Reigns. I don't like Reigns. Don't like him at all. Don't like anything about the guy. But I'll tell you this. They have no they have no fucking clue how to get anybody over anymore. Even the guys that they want to get over, they have no idea how to do it. Um Then Dean Ambrose comes out. He goes to attack um Oh, 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 the Dullies attack. First, it was the Dullies rush in and they attack um, Roman Reigns from behind. Heyman doesn't stay around, which would have been awesome. You know, if Heyman would stand around like laughing at Reigns, that would have been cool. But they didn't take that route. They're like, oh, is, you know, they have ties to Heyman. You know, do, do you think me? Obviously, I mean, what do they think we're fucking stupid? More insulting our intelligence. They would have been better off doing, you know, uh, just if Brock's not there. You know, to have the Dullies as Brock's enforcers, even though Brock doesn't need an enforcer, it would still be pretty cool to see the Dullies with him. Just like, you know, Heyman's entourage. I mean, they always fuck this up. You know, Curtis Axel on Ryback was not a very good entourage, but uh, it would have been nice to at least have it. Um, you know, just like the same time, at the same time, they missed up on the opportunity to have CM Punk and, like, Brock kind of be a team, which would have been really original and pretty fucking cool, I think. But, uh, you know, they, they always fuck these opportunities up. So, you know, I hope that they stick with the idea of, you know, Heyman managing the Dullies. Um... But anyway, Dean Ambrose comes out. He uh, he grabs Reigns and he acts like he's gonna give him the dirty deeds. But then uh, Reigns, you know, pulls away and they kind of like do the fist bump. Um, like I said, I think that they could have done a little bit more with maybe Heyman doing facial expressions, laughing at Reigns getting beat up. But you know, uh, like I said, a a any good opportunity just to assume that they're gonna miss out on it. But you know. Uh, the Dullies, it's interesting, um, you know, not like I'm really dying to see Ambrose and Reigns versus the Dullies, but we are probably going to get it, uh, probably on the next Raw. Um, Heath Slater defeated Zack Ryder, what the fuck was the point of this? To have the Jobber team, or what people are calling the new Job Squad, getting a victory over a guy that's already jo a Jobber... I, I, I mean, that's like shit. I mean, I hate to say this about, you know, Heath Slater and Zack Ryder, two guys that I think deserve a lot more in this fucking company, to be quite honest. Uh, it's a real shame to, you know, to, to fucking see. But it, it's like it's like shit uh, getting a victory over fucking Bat Guano. You know, it, it, it's like one's not better than the other. Uh, it's like, yeah, dog poop, maybe, to be more exact. It's like dog poop getting a victory over bat guano. It's like the same fucking thing. One's not better than the other. It's like it did. This match did nothing for nobody. It's Heath Slater getting a victory over Zack Ryder means nothing. If Heath Slater beat somebody else on the roster that actually meant something, like Dean Ambrose, then I could see it. But. To have him go out there and beat the guy who loses every week anyway, that's just, I, I, I don't see how the fuck that made that on the TV. And what is this running around the ring like a bunch of fucking nerds, the fucking victory lap? How fucking goofy does it look? Oh, the way they're screaming and shit. How the fuck are we supposed to get behind that? 
How the fuck, you know, even if their heels or faces, either way, no one's going to fucking take the team seriously. Even if they're meant for comic relief, they're not even funny. So they're losing three ways here. Not good baby faces, not good heels, not good comic relief, not good anything. Fucking worthless bullshit. The Lucha Dragons and Neville um, uh, against the League of Nations. League of Nations wins. I don't give a flying fuck. Uh, now you have Del Rio and um, fucking uh, Kalisto. I can't even fucking remember the name of the U.S. champion. They're uh, they're gonna have a two out of three fall a th two out of three falls match. Uh, I would have liked to see this go on between Owens and Ziggler to freshen that up a bit, but. You know, also, we've seen enough of Kalisto and Del Rio, so either way, you know, uh, two matches, I mean, I don't think they've wrestled as many times as Owens and Ziggler have, uh, but, but for fuck's sake, I'm fucking sick of this fucking match already. I can't wait till the fucking feuds ends. You know, this is all they fucking do. They extend feuds to the point where people are just so fucking sick of it already and they just want it to fucking end. Like the fucking show itself. I mean, for God fucking sakes, you know, it's fucking unbearable. They Not, not only do they come up with bad feuds that don't have any storylines, but they keep repeating themselves like a fucking broken record over and goddamn over again. It doesn't matter if nobody's responding. They're just like, oh, we're going to keep giving you the same match until you respond. I mean, what is it? Is it is it that or they're just trying to torture everybody? I don't fucking know anymore. The ratings are fucking down. So it's like, what what does that even mean to them? They, they just keep putting out the same fucking lame ass bullshit. Nobody's cheering. The crowd hasn't been hiding over a decade. You know, and they keep doing the same shit. The crowd's not even allowed to be hot. They get hot, some people are going to get thrown out of the audience. So there's no reason to even get raucous because the WWE don't like that either. Becky Lynch defeated Naomi. I was laughing my ass off. Becky Lynch gets the super kick from Tamina in, in the back like they're showing a pre-taped segment. I think this was on the Raw pre-show. And the way how Becky Lynch looked after the kick, she sold it so poorly. She just like kind of laid there with her eyes open. Like she was better off acting like she got knocked out. I mean, if you're not expecting a kick, if you're not in the ring, you, you know, like you should have like gotten knocked out or knocked for a loop. But she kind of like just lays there like this. I'm like, okay, that has nothing to do with creative. That's just bad selling. Not that I don't like Becky Lynch. I mean, she's a good wrestler and everything, you know, or good enough, I guess. Uh, but for fuck's sake, what the fuck was up with that fucking facial expression? Uh, I mean, it looked like she was fucking corpsing or some shit. Like she was just uh, like, what the fuck was that facial expression? Sell the move. Don't just fucking stare at the camera. For fuck's sake. You know, even when, you know, at least like when the show sucks, could there at least, could anything go right? No. We got like two decent matches, but look how they end the show. This is what cracks me up. So, yeah, Be Becky and Naomi. And then they have um, Sasha Banks gets in the ring. And it's like nobody even fucking cares. Like, they, they just like kill Sasha's heat as much as you fucking can, guys. Don't, don't even try... To put Sasha on a pedestal. Just fucking throw her out there. You know. Don't, don't have her cut any promos. Or wrestle or anything like that. To promote her for the match. No just have her come out at the end. And just like wave her hands at the heels. You know. <laughs> Did they fucking care. About anything. She could have at least commentated. I know it was a two minute match. But at least do something. To promote Sasha. There she is. There's Sasha. She's going to be in the match. You guys don't know anything about her other than what you've seen in NXT. We haven't given you a reason to give a fuck, but there you fucking go. I mean, for fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. I can't stop saying that because it's like I can't even just bear it anymore. I, I, I mean, really, I'm just begging, 
begging them to fucking do something good or satisfying for a change. Couple of decent things on this show, but it's just so much shit over the span of three hours. It's three hours of fucking shit. Then in the this is the main event. This is how they ended the show, guys. So get this straight. The champion is not going to be Triple H, one of the biggest stars of all time, whether you like it or not. It is a fact. Triple H was not on the show, even though he is the world champion and he will be main eventing WrestleMania. That's right. The company has wrestlers, young guys, young talent that dies of the satisfaction of being in the main event at WrestleMania. Now, Triple H has main evented WrestleMania. He main evented 16, main evented 18. Uh, he main evented 20, 21, uh, 22. He wasn't there for, tw I, I could go on and on. He's main evented so many WrestleManias that now when he's not even in this prime, he's going to main event WrestleMania, right? And he's not even there to promote himself. Yeah, I know he's going to be there next Monday night. And he's going to probably have some involvement at the pay-per-view. But can they at least, you know, this match that they're going to have, the main event at Fastlane. They could at least give it the last segment. The guy should be in the last segment to promote. You know, the most important match should be promoted in the last segment of Raw. Or in the main event at least. That's how it's always been traditionally, and it should always be that. Your center focus should be the last thing that people should see when, you know, Raw fades to black. But they're not doing that. And they always, they've done this from time to time, and I never understand it. So, the Wyatts haven't even been booked in a match. Haven't even been booked in a match for the pay-per-view, guys. There's nothing official out on the Wyatts and the pay-per-view. We know they feuded with Brock, but they're putting that on hold for right now. No, no, no follow-up to the Wyatts and Brock. We're putting that on hold. No, no interaction, no nothing for that. That happened before the Rumble, at the Rumble, but now there's dead silence, and that feud is forgotten about. They might pick it up again for Mania, but right now, nothing. So here's your main event. Big Show and Braun Strowman. Two of the tallest guys in WWE. It's a two minute match and it ends in a disqualification. Now you could say that this match was worth booking due to the spectacle of the size of the guys. Because they're fucking huge. Okay, I could see that. This is something they've done. Spectacle. I've always said WWE should be about being larger in life. And they should put more spectacle into their booking. More spectacle into the non-existent storylines. But a two-minute match. And then Ryback comes in to join the fray. And then Kane erupts through the fucking ring <laughs> for probably the, the fifth time in like two, a two-year span. How many times... Is Kane going to come up through the ring? He just did that in his feud with Rollins last year in September. And they're already doing it like four months later. Four or five months, whatever the fuck it is. They just did that. And they're going to do it again? For fuck's sake. Obviously, they're going to have some type of six-man tag match at the pay-per-view. I, I get that. But... They wait to the last minute to announce it. And this is the last segment. They haven't shown Kane in weeks. But it's like he's returning because he got beat up so bad. So Big Show, Ryback, and Kane. Big Show and Kane. Guys that people have been saying should retire for fucking years. This is who is in the main event segment of Raw. The last segment before the pay-per-view. Not the guys who are going to be main eventing the show, but the guys who, without a doubt, are going to be fucking in the uh, the mid card, the upper mid card, or some shit like that. So, what the fuck was the fucking point of the way how they ended this show? I mean, could they have fucking taken you out of it any more than that? 
I mean, what, what, what are they even thinking? What are they fucking retarded? You end the show in, in in the in the least climactic fashion possible. I know you could say, "Oh, Kane came through the ring. That's really impressive." But for fuck's sake, we we just fucking saw that. We just saw it. You're gonna show the same thing again, just a couple of months later. I mean, holy fucking shit, guys. I mean, it's not like this show is terrible enough, but they're doing cliches. They can't even book this show in a traditional fashion. They got to make it even worse than it normally is right before the fucking pay-per-view. Guys, this without a doubt, this was a shit-ass fucking Raw. I enjoyed like two matches. The Dudley's promo was okay couple of little things here and there, but for fuck's sakes, this is the way you end the show. There, there was no excitement involving the match. Brock Lesnar is going to be on SmackDown. Doesn't matter if it's on USA. They, no one's even watching that show. No one is going to watch SmackDown when the flagship show fucking sucks. And a lot of people don't seem to be understanding that. I've already mentioned that in a couple of videos. Don't even bother with SmackDown. They should take that shit off the air. I know they're not going to do that. That's not being realistic. But as I said, stop booking big matches for SmackDown. Their best shit should be on Raw. Why is the best announcer on SmackDown? Why are these matches being booked for fucking SmackDown? I know they want to try to get the ratings up. But when the ratings are shit for Raw, don't go for the Beast Show, you dumb fucks. Guys, I don't know anymore. I mean, for for fuck's sake! I mean, look at this fucking show. They have no in. They have no vested interest in improving. They have. They don't even have the world champion on the show. There's no entry. There's no nothing on this fucking show. The, the, even when there's potential to do a lot of good, to do a lot of intrigue, they fuck it up. They fuck it up. They fuck it up, and they fuck it up some more. Next week, they're going to fuck it up. The week after that, they're going to fuck it up. And the following week, they're going to fuck it up. They fuck it up. They fuck it up. They fuck it up. They fuck it up. And this show, they fucked up. And Fastlane, it's going to suck. Okay, thanks. Bye.